There were many factors that contributed to the discovery and defeat of Morio Cho's own serial killer, Yoshikage Kira. From multiple stand users working in unison, to a single suspicious schoolboy, Hayato Kawajiri, digging up dirt on his own fraudster father. But, this investigation, like all things, has a source. A place where everything ties back to and begins. For Yoshikage Kira, this source was the gentle ghost girl guiding the gang going forth, Remi Sugimoto, and her dog, Arnold, the spirits of the ghost alleyway. Remy Sugimoto is a major character in the story of Diamond Is Not Crash, first appearing in Chapter 330 and ultimately changing the entire direction of the part from there. As in her introduction, Remy helped push the Moriocho gang down the direction of the main antagonist of that part, though she also helped introduce a bunch of new concepts to the world of Jojo and basically laid the groundwork for Araki's future side series, Thus Spoke Rohan Kashibe. Though before we get too deep into that, let's first understand the meaning behind her name and design. Now, Remy Sugimoto's name is actually a pretty interesting case, as its naming theme doesn't seem to match up with the Rocky's normal method. First, let's start by analyzing the characters in the name itself, starting first with Raimi, which is comprised of the characters for Belle and Beauty, with the Belle being the same character as the Shinto believes Suzu Belle, which is a religious bell often used in ceremonies by women to repel evil. Along with this, their ringing during the summertime is considered to be a sort of psychological cleansing, as it removes evil from the world. And this fits pretty perfectly with Raimi's actions during the part, especially since her story takes place during the summer of 1999, though Araki chose her name to be pronounced Raimi instead of as Suzumi, likely in reference to the director that he enjoys the work of, that being Sam Raimi, who at the time of Sugimoto's introduction had already made a name for himself with his Evil Dead trilogy and many other movies. We also know that Araki is a bit of a fan of his movies since in 2003 the two of them shared an interview published in Playboy magazine where they discussed each other's work, with Araki even stating that he enjoys Raimi's specific style of direction and, and specifically that Evil Dead and Dark Man are two of his favorite movies. Along with this, we can assume that if Araki did base Raimi's name off of Sam Raimi, then her animal companion, Arnold the Dog, would likely pull from another American reference. Or more specifically, the Austrian-American actor and former governor of California, Big Arnie himself. Though, this is mostly speculation on my part. Though there was some belief early on that Raimi and Arnold's name came from Pink Floyd songs, with Raimi coming from C. Emily Play and Arnold coming from Arnold Lane. Though the Emily and Raimi connection doesn't actually work at all in Japanese. Only if you specifically force a Romanized edit does it work, and even then it's not solid. The Arnold one might be more true to life, but a lot of Part 4 names came from people or places rather than music, at least for character names instead of stand names. But maybe Arnold is considered, in a way, Raimi's stand, so I'm not too certain on Arnold himself, but I know the Raimi one isn't true. Then from here you have her family name, Sugimoto, which is a name that essentially means one who lives beneath the cedars, and this can be interpreted in many ways. With Raimi being physically dead, but being alive as a ghost, she matches up with that family name pretty well, though. Though her death was not a natural one, she was murdered by Yoshikage Kira in a manner similar to the classic urban legend, The Licked Hand which details a dark night where a girl is awoken by the sound of a constant drip in her room. Scared, she reaches under her bed to see if her guard dog is still there, and she feels a licking sensation upon her hand. This reassures her that she is safe within her bed, though eventually, curiosity gets the better of her, and she follows the dripping noise to its source, and learns that it comes from the slit throat of the same dog she thought was under her bed the whole time, with the words written in the dog's blood that reads, People can lick too. Though in the case of Raimi Sugimoto, once uncovering the truth, her first thought was not fear for herself, but the little boy she was babysitting that night. This kid was Rohan Kashibe, who was only four at the time. She ran to him, picked him up, and pushed him out a window, before she became the first victim of the serial killer, Yoshikage Kira. And the violent nature of her death, mixed together with her strong will to protect Rohan, likely helped Raimi become an Anryo, or vengeful spirit. Retaining her looks from that night, including the horrible scars inflicted on her back by Kira, which is actually very common with Japanese ghosts. But along with becoming a ghost, Raimi also found herself awakening within an alleyway that didn't actually exist. A strange location which rested between life and death. And over the 15 years before the events of Part 4, she would figure out the ins and outs of the strange alleyway, making it her home in a sense, 
and this location itself appears to be acting as sort of a gateway between life and death and appearing as an impossible space. Though some people might discover it as an unmapped alleyway near Station 11 of the Osan Groceries, but if they enter this alleyway, they have entered the Yokai's domain. And within it, you will endlessly loop the alleyway until you either figure out or are guided down the right path. Though, when you are within the final 20 meters between the alleyway and the real world, you must never look back until you have fully escaped. No matter what you feel at your back or hear behind you, never turn back. For if you do, you will be greeted with the hands of the underworld, spirits that can rend a soul in seconds, tearing one spirit directly from their body the moment they grasp them. And then they would begin to shred it and drag you away into an unknown fate. And the only shown way to escape their grasp is to not be able to see them, as shown when Rohan removes Koichi's ability to see, saving him from his own doom. Now, the ghost alleyway seems to be based on a ton of different things, but we'll start first with the horror it seemingly draws from, this being the fear of the familiar unknown. Like when you return to your hometown to discover that there's something that's always been there but you've never seen it before, or when you maybe find a weird door in your own house. A place you thought you understood completely now has a mystery that's been there the whole time. Another great example of this style is the internet aesthetic fad known as liminal spaces, which are images of locations that feel either uncanny or weird to look at, almost like you've lived there or have been there but you haven't, with one of the most famous examples of this being the back rooms, which gained its own unique horror following. And this feeling makes a lot of sense when you factor in Araki was trying to make Morio feel like a lived-in environment, since it's actually based on his hometown and the location of the alleyway is a real place, which itself also has an awfully suspicious looking alleyway. Now beyond that, the ability of the hands within the alleyway seem to draw from many different mythoses about entering the underworld, two of the most famous being Orpheus and the Izanami and Izanagi tale, where a person would enter the underworld in search of their beloved, and after finding them, they try to leave together, under the single rule that they must never look back at their beloved one until they have both fully exited the underworld, with both Izanagi and Orpheus breaking this rule at the very end, with the results varying. In the case of Orpheus, his beloved was dragged back into the underworld, rendering her unsavable. With Izanagi, he was overwhelmed with fear when he saw that Izanami, his wife, had become a horrifying corpse, running to the exit and sealing it behind him, ending their marriage. Now, aspects of both of these myths are incorporated in one way in the ghost alleyway's usage in the story, with the roles of both of the leads being unknowingly represented by Rohan and Koichi, with Rohan specifically being Orpheus and Koichi being Izanagi. But how the hands function combine together the drag to hell aspect of Orpheus's beloved one and the vengeful nature of Izanami. Raimi also being shackled to this location fits both of the women in the myth since neither of them could leave on their own, and her horrible back scars play directly into Izanami. Izanami's own rotten body, and the alleyway being a gateway to the afterlife also works, given that Raimi has claimed to have seen the victims of Kira when they die and pass on, and we see this actually happen in the series. We also know this alleyway is more than just a part of Raimi, as other ghosts in the series know about it and its rules, as shown with Yoshihiro Kira. And the alleyway is used like a gateway by other characters as well, such as Rohan who fools Cheap Trick and damns him to hell, and of course Raimi who planned to use it for 15 years and finally got revenge on Kira, causing him to be torn away both from life and an afterlife, and with her revenge fulfilled, Raimi was finally able to rest and ascend to heaven in peace. Along with this, Raimi's death, her existence in a paranormal other world, her revenge, and just the entire ending of Part 4 seemingly is in reference to David Lynch's own Twin Peaks, with Raimi being a stand-in for Laura Palmer, a young girl whose death kickstarted a surreal investigation, and the ghost alleyway being a reference to the Black Lodge. Though Raimi's story may have ended in Part 4, it did pave a path for the future of Araki's writing, specifically featuring Rohan in the Thus Spoke Rohan Kashibe miniseries. As the Thus Spoke series is full of Rohan and his encounters with otherworldly or supernatural entities like Raimi, all with their own unique rules and mythoses, all with Rohan taking the case under the guise of him gaining more material for his manga, which is the exact excuse he used when deciding to help Raimi. Raimi as a character honestly represents Moriocho's golden heart. She was someone so pure of heart that their first thoughts when in danger was the safety of someone else, and her ascending into heaven represents the purification of the darkness within the town of Moriocho. She in a way represents a scar on this town's legacy created by an evil man. And now that he's been defeated, the town can heal and return to its former glory. 
And with that all said and done, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. Every little bit helps keep this channel flowing as smoothly as it does. And if you want to avoid being pulled into the alleyway of ghosts, well, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com.